Hey guys, this is Pastor Russell. We want to thank you and my wife Annette. We want to thank you for tuning in to our Thursday uh, Valley Briefing here. Uh, it was a great service last night. We really enjoyed the message that Pastor Doug gave. Yes. And uh, we want to talk to you today about something that's very passionate in our lives, and that's prayer today. Yes. Uh, me and my wife, we have been uh, affiliated with uh, Valley for the last 14, 15 years, but for the last 12 years, We've been uh, leading our intercessory prayer group, and uh, we have an amazing intercessory prayer team here at Valley, and we pray for all the prayer requests every week that they come in, and even now we still pray for your prayer request. But we want to talk about prayer today. And what is prayer? Uh, prayer is a time where we can come before God with our request, and uh, we can hear God's voice. It says in 1 John five fourteen through 15 that we can come with confidence knowing that when we pray according to God's will, he not only hears our prayers, but he grants us those things that we ask of him. Amen. Honey, what are some things that you felt confident in as you went before God in prayer? And how did God show you um, that you could put your confidence in him? Well, I, it's always, it's, it seems like in the times, like when you go through some hard times, you're really, um, wanting to really cry out to the Lord and pray to the Lord. And one thing that God has always put on my heart is to pray his word, to pray his promises. And I remember um, when you had your accident and we ended up losing our everything basically and our lives changed drastically. Um, that was in 2010, I, yes. I crashed on a scooter and broke my ankle. Yes. And it was, it was a really hard time in our life. And, and I just remember the Holy Spirit would just press me to just go on these prayer walks every day. And I'd go to that little park in the willows yeah. and I would just do these prayer walks. And I, was, um, I would declare God's word. And one of my favorite scriptures that God put on my heart to pray every day, um, it wasn't my circumstance, it was my future. And I would always pray Ephesians 3.20 over our lives. Mm -hmm. And um, that's one of my favorite verses. And I have it right here. And um, it's really powerful. But I want to... So I'd take my Bible with me and I would just pray it. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine according to the power that is at work within him to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. And I would just pray, um, I would declare and decree and say, Lord, you said in your word that you will do more than we can ever dream or ask, more than we can ever imagine. And our circumstances didn't look like that, but I was praying for our future. Yeah. And, um, and in times where I was stressed, like I didn't know how we were gonna um, pay our bills. Right. I would um, look into God's word and to his promise, and I would pray Philippians um, 419, that our God would supply all of our needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Amen. Jesus. And that would give me so much peace because I would just rest in that word. I would rest in that promise. And then God would just do supernatural, miraculous things. Yeah. And it just reminds me of this, this little season that we're in too, right. there's people out there that are probably really struggling and going through some hard times. Right. And um, so if you, if you need um, just some extra promises, um, Philippians 419 is so powerful to pray and it just gives you so much peace. And um, so that's what it did for me basically. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, the Bible says in, in Romans 8, uh, verse 34, it says that Jesus is our high priest and that he intercedes for us. You know that, right? Yes. You know that Jesus is interceding for you right now before the Father. Amen. And it says in Hebrews 4.16, just like it said in 1 John 5, it says that we can come with confidence before the throne of grace to find mercy and help in our time of need. Amen. See, that's what we need to do in prayer right now. We need to come with confidence before the Lord, because God gave me a word as I was on the way over here. And he says, when you have confidence in the one that you're praying to, you will have confidence in what you're praying for. 
So I think the key to prayer is understanding that you're not the one that's going to answer the prayer. Right. He's going to answer the prayer, but you've got to present it to him. Now, prayer goes both ways. Prayer isn't just you talking to God, but then it's you stopping. And as it says in Psalms 46.10, to surrender, to be still. That's, that word to be still means to surrender, give up. And listen and let God show you who he is. It says in his word in Job 22, 28, it says that when you decide and you decree a thing, yes. it will be established for you. Amen. See, there's something about declaration, honey, yes. that I want to touch on real fast here. That declaration, the definition of, of, of a decree is to make an official order issued with legal authority. So when we make a decree on the earth, see, here's how we make that legal is we use God's word. As we start to Amen. pray the word of God, like my wife said, Lord, you said in, in Ephesians 3.20 that, Lord, you're the God that does exceedingly and abundantly. And he did. And he did. He did. And he does. <laughs> and he always will. And then Philippians 4.19, yep. that, Lord, you said you will meet my needs yep. according to your riches and your glory in Jesus Christ. Sure did. See, what happens is it's not like you're, making God remember what he said. He knows what he said. Absolutely. He wants to know if you believe what he said. And by you quoting that back to him, God hears your heart's cry to him. You know, it says in Jeremiah 33, 3, it says, call unto me and I will show you great and unsearchable things which you do not know. Yes. Do you know that word to call unto him means cry out to him. And then he'll show you those great and unsearchable things are really the hidden things, not from you, but he's hidden for you, but he's hidden them from the enemy. See, in this time, as we start to decree the word of God, God's about to move you guys. I don't know if you remember back in January when we had our first Wednesday and God gave me that prophetic word of uh, the Hebrew calendar year being 5780. See, there's something very significant about the Hebrew uh, letters in the alphabet. The number 80 is the 22nd letter in the Hebrew alphabet, and that number has a prophetic symbol. Okay, it has a numerical value, but it has a prophetic symbol. And what the prophetic symbol of 80 is, is the mouth. Mm. It's the mouth. It's what we're speaking. See, God is going to start to move on your prayers this year. Something that God showed you through a friend of yours about is symbolizing what the enemy's trying to do. Yes, one of our friends um, actually told me, um, isn't it funny how right now in this time with the coronavirus um, that we have to literally use the symbol of a mask to cover our mouth right. and and this is the year of the mouth in the that the is prophetic the prof symbol yes and see symbol. and here's the thing you guys you know we know that god what, what god has joined together not just in a marriage but in a church the enemy cannot separate it Amen. and what we need to do as a church you guys <laughs> is we need to be praying the word of god yes. all day long Amen. Pray over the government, pray over our city, pray over our churches, pray over our families. You pray the word of God. Yes. No weapon formed against me, right. my family, my church, my Amen. city, my employer is going to prosper. Amen. See, when you start to declare the word, that's how Jesus fought the devil. Yes. He said, it's written three times. He said it. And then Satan goes, well, I can't argue with the truth. And he left. See, some of us are getting beat up by life because we're not using the tools that God has given us in prayer. And that's the word of God. You know, the Bible says that the word of God is living and it's active. Amen. You know, the word of God in Ephesians 6 says, that's the sword of the spirit. You want to fight back. You want to get back at the enemy. See, all the other weaponry we have in the armor is for defense. Right. But the only offensive weapon in the armor is the sword of the spirit. And you know what? And at the end of the weaponry in, in Ephesians 6, it says, and with this, all prayers. Yes. So prayer is part of the weaponry of the full armor of God. I kind of like to view uh, prayer as arrows, mm -hmm. okay, that we're shooting at the enemy. But you know what shoots our arrows yep. is our faith. Our Amen. faith is the bow that we shoot these arrows through. And you know what? I really want to encourage you that through this year of being 5780, it's the year of the prophetic symbol of the mouth. And so you know what, whether you have to wear a mask on your face, you know what, the devil can't stop you from praying. Nope. And as you pray, the Bible says that God hears 
your prayers yes, you and that the prayers of the righteous are powerful yep. and they're effective. Amen. So we're decreeing and we're declaring yep. that this is going to be a year of breakthrough, not yep. just for, for us, not just yep. for the church, but for you. Because guess what's coming up, you guys? We just celebrated Passover on April 12th. May 31st is Pentecost. That was when God birthed a new thing in the church. You know what? Can you believe with me and, yes. and my wife that Amen. we're believing that God is going to birth a new thing this year? A mega Pentecost. A mega Pentecost. Amen. Here's the we're thing. declaring and decreeing that, Come right, on, honey? right now. In the name of a Jesus, we A great outpouring mega Pentecost. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> and you know what? Let me give you an acronym that God gave me a long time ago. When I was going through a hard time, it doesn't matter what you're going through, I heard him say, push, Russell, push. Yep. You know what that means? That means pray until something happens. Don't stop. God's getting ready to birth something just like when. Yep. When you're when you're going to have a baby and we just had a little grandson right? and our daughter had him in two pushes. Yep. So <laughs> but we believe that something is about to be birthed in yep. this Pentecost. Yep. So we have to push. That's we right. We have to pray until something we have happens. To push, you guys. And, and pray God's promises for our future right. um, that he's going to use this season to do in Ephesians 320 for right. us. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. Well, you know what? We're going to pray right now. Okay. okay. Yeah. And I'm going to agree with you, honey, because that, that is a, a super mega Pentecost coming up. Amen. All right. It is. Well, Father, right now yes. we come before you and we thank you that, Lord, uh, your word says that we are kings and priests, Lord. Yes, Jesus. That means that we have authority and we have access to the kingdom, Lord. And so right now we're going to just take that authority and, and that access to the kingdom, as it says in, in Hebrews 4.16, that, Lord, we can come confidently before your throne of grace to find mercy and help in our time of need. Right now, Lord, we pray for what we're going through as a church, as a nation, as a city, individually. And, Lord, we know that no weapon formed against us is going to prosper because yes, greater is yes. your love for us yes. than anything that comes against us. And Lord, I know in this time, Lord, you're preparing hearts to get ready to receive a great outpouring, God. And I want to decree that over you today, that God is going to pour out a spirit of expectation. Yes, As they were in the upper yes. room in the books of, of Acts chapter two, yes. it says that they were all in one accord. And what yes, that means is Jesus. they were in agreement. Yes. They were in agreement to expect something that Jesus said, go and wait until you've received power from on high. Amen. Something's coming, you guys. And I want you to be encouraged through this message today. And uh, pray the word, you guys. Understand that greater is the love of God that's for you than anything against you. Amen. 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 Well, God bless you. And we'll see you on Sunday. Don't forget 9 and 11 a.m. God yes. bless you. Amen.